Hello all viewers, welcome to the 76th Kelo Chess India team battle and the battle is going to start right now in about 5 seconds. I was a bit late to start the broadcast but we have a lot of comments right now in the comment section. I am going to check from all of the comments right now and first we have a comment from uh, where is the window? Hold on guys. I'm just trying to find you on the comment section so we have a yogaraj mahale saying hi sir please analyze my game yes yogaraj will be taking up your game uh, then we have multination team organizer then uh, let's start a game meanwhile so we have a request from jayashri shukla please analyze the game of aditya 18 yes we'll try to analyze the game of aditya 18 yogaraj is telling to analyze the game then we have multination uh, Team organizer, please advertise multination tournament in the broadcast. Okay, ma okay, organizer, we'll try to organize, uh, we'll try to promote your tournament. Hello, sir, please analyze my game. Says Prathamesh Rasabuddha. So, Prathamesh, Pratham, sorry, not Prathamesh, Pratham. Okay, so Pratham, we will take your game. And I think that's it. So, uh, Pratham Lokare, you are asking a uh, rating of me or someone else. I'm not sure. So, you can just mention in the comment section. So, let's take up the first game from. Uh, Aditya 18, that is the first request that we have right now. And let's see, let's go to the tournament right now. And this this game is actually going on. Actually, it's a nice game. I just wanted you to uh, uh, check this game as well. And meanwhile, you can see on the screen, there is a Skype ID, which is mentioned, ms 184 that is my Skype ID, which you can call on any time right now in the live broadcast. And we can have your story shared on this live broadcast. So look at this position guys, it's nicely poised and we have a good development from both the players and it's difficult to find a clear plan out here. Okay, so knight is on f8, probably it will come to e6 uh, somehow and then go to probably the c5 square or even to the g5 square. The bishop has taken the e6 square, so knight cannot come on e6 right now. And uh, uh, what are the remaining comments? Let's check. Uh, Archana says hello sir hello Archana hope you are doing all good and safe at your home uh, okay I think there is some problem with the screen you might not be able to see that correctly let me just arrange it for you yeah I think the screen is visible now uh, so Bishop c1 has been played, just trying to put the bishop back on c1 and trying to get it on this uh, diagonal here. So let's see what happens now. White is going to play the next move. Okay, so bishop e3. Now there is uh, this, this game is nicely... It's, it's, it's a very interesting position because knight d7 or this knight d7 and f5 I think should be a valid plan for black here. Meanwhile, white has ended himself in not the best of the position so he should probably go for the exchanges of the rooks and bring the another rook on d1, get that exchanged as well. I can see a comment from uh, Pushpa Hinge. Okay, Pushpa Hinge, I think that's Mayank that, yeah, that's, that, uh, that you are over there if I'm not wrong. So, yes, I'll try to... Uh, Advertise your uh, multination cup, surely. And uh, I think there is some black screen which is being displayed right now. Okay. Anyways, I, I'll just try to get it corrected. Uh, okay. So, rook d1 was played. As I said, that white should exchange the rook. So, rooks have been exchanged. And now we have uh, black to play here. What should black play here, guys? What do you think? What should be the black's right plan over here? Let me still arrange the screen. Actually, it's not the best that you can have. Okay, I think now it's better. So, uh, knight b6. What can be the plan here? Can black play a5, a4 and try to attack on the king side? Okay, I can see a 
comment from techno boy sir you are the best thank you techno boy meanwhile all the viewers out there if you have any questions you can just put in the comment section and i would be happy to answer them all okay so this is the current position and we have a uh, king at seven played right now so black is just trying to create some fortress on the king side here just making sure that white is not able to penetrate this beautiful fort that black has constructed in his game so let's see what's happening so queen d2 was played so queen d2 generally you have been taught by your coaches or over the experience that it is best to have your queens and your rooks in the open file so it's now queen d2 was played for the same purpose and then b5 has been played So there is a question from Techno Boy in the Ultra Bullet games. How can I win against time? So I have explained this yesterday, Techno Boy. So what you can do is first you can make sure that your opening theory is the best, and uh, after the opening theory, you have to make sure that you develop your new skill to find the safe move on the board. If you are able to find the safe move on the board, that is going to help you to actually create some kind of stable and solid position on the board, which will not lose or which will not create any blunders from your side okay so you have to make sure that you learn the technique of uh, making the uh, solid move on the board okay so that's the technique for you techno boy uh, you have to make sure that you find the solid moves safe moves on the board which will make sure that you are not losing and how to make that moves okay so first thing is never keep your pieces hanging that's the most important point don't keep your pieces hanging on the board if you keep your pieces hanging there are more chances of having a blender from your side okay so just make sure no pieces are uh, hanging out there Okay, so that's the first point. Then you have to make sure that you don't miss any tactics. Okay, any tactics that are coming from your opposition or opponent, make sure you don't miss them. Also, make sure that your king is as safe as possible. Look at both the kings here. Both the kings are very safe. So that is one of the things that you have to uh, keep in mind that always, always make sure your kings are safe so that you don't give any opportunity to your opponent to attack or to create any chances on your king. Now, in this position, you can see that yeah, this of course this pawn exchange was now done by black but if you can see that there is a a6 and c6 pawn these two are weaknesses in black's camp and if the end game comes on very soon these two are going to be the targets in the black's position okay black white is under time pressure now so g3 is going to be under pressure Okay, bishop d6 was now queen is under attack. Queen d2 was played. Archana Sharma says, keep it up, sir. Thank you very much, Archana, for the compliments. Knight to c4 and pawn takes c4. Yeah. So now I think after this c5, this bishop is going to be a very nice piece on this d6 square. It won't be able to, uh, you won't be able to dislodge this bishop from d6 square. Okay. So now knight h5 has been played and that seems to be okay. Ah, that I think knight f4 is now available, but yeah. So black is time out here, white is victorious, a very nice game coming to an end out there. So, but even if knight f4 would have been played, then knight takes f4, e takes f4, bishop takes f4 was available. So nothing to lose there for white. Let's now go to the back to the tournament guys and try to find game from the request that we have got. The first request was for Aditya 18.
Okay, so Aditya Yantin has played around uh, three games. He lost uh, two of the games, but let's check his game against uh, GST Guna. What's happening right now in his games? So that was one of the requests which came to us. And uh, okay, so it's just few moves, so it's not worth of uh, checking the game. Let's check. Yeah, he is playing against another player. This is uh, C. Uh, Chanidu from Golden Castle Chess Club versus Aditya from Gujarat Lions. So Aditya is playing as black out here and let's see what happened in the opening. e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop c4, knight takes e4, knight takes e5, knight to c6, knight to f7, queen to f6 and castles. And this is the way actually it's, it's not the easiest way to play from both the sides here. Keeping the king exposed for black is and allowing this knight f7 is actually... Uh, under immense uh, pressure, black is under immense pressure here. So knight e5 was played, and knight takes h8 will be replied by knight takes c4 here. And then we have uh, yeah. So why black white has to play here? So white is not in the yeah. So white has actually castled. White has captured the rook on h8. But now if you look at his pieces, this these all his team has yet to be developed. Okay, so Vishal Khera says, I am your new subscriber. Thanks, Vishal, for subscribing and uh, being the part of our Kalo Chess India family. It always gives me immense pleasure to have uh, beautiful chess lovers like you on the channel. And uh, even here, G6 was hanging, actually. Queen takes G6 could have been played. Queen takes G6, Queen takes G6, Knight takes G6. Could have been an okay position for uh, white, nothing to lose out there. Black's king is bit exposed, so you can play rook to e1 now, or even pawn to d4 is playable. This queen is absolutely safe. No one can attack this queen right now, unless black plays pawn to d6 and bishop to e6, trying to attack this uh, g8 square. Knight takes g6 is played now, and uh, knight takes g6. Knight takes g6 was played, but I don't know why uh, white would give away his uh, knight here. There is no way, there is no reason to give away this this knight for free for this pawn. I can see a comment from Rancho. Hi Rancho, hi, hope you are doing well, safe and sound at your home. Good to see you on live broadcast after a good, good amount of time. Archana says bye-bye. Okay, Archana, bye-bye. Hope to see you back again tomorrow on the live broadcast. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends as much as possible. So knight g6 is not the perfect move here actually. Uh, knight g6 is this knight is already supporting queen is already supporting so there is no point in capturing this pawn white should not have captured this pawn and given the knight for free but he chose to give his knight free probably it was a gift for black and then rook to e1 check and knight to e7 and queen goes to b3 now this knight would have been okay on the h8 it was there was no absolutely no reason to give it away but even after this position although black has these one two three four five pieces and white has Four pieces. White is pawn, uh, piece down, but he still has these three pawns. Actually, if if white uh, white is able to go into the ending, uh, then white might be able to win. But I think uh, black won this game. Let's check what happened. So this first of all, white, if you are listening, uh, uh, or black, if you are listening, uh, white, you are listening. This g6 knight should not have been given for free. G6 pawn was not there to be taken for you. Okay, so queen goes to b3, then pawn h4. So no, 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 no. Don't push your pawns unless you have developed your pieces. Always first develop your minor pieces and then go for the attack. So pawn h4 is not the best move, guys, here. And these pieces are going to sit inside. They will just relax for remaining part of their life and you're going to pay a price for that. So pawn h4 was played, knight to e4, uh, free knight. And that free knight was not captured by the rook. Another blunder from white side. Pawn to g4. And then we have queen takes f2. King to h1. And knight g3. Queen g3. Queen g3. And that's an easy win for black now. So let's go back to the tournament guys. And try to check the next game. So Rancho says your tips are awesome. Thank you Rancho. I'm just trying to share whatever knowledge I have. And uh, just make sure that it helps someone. The needy chess players who are there and most of the players actually are not able to afford the coaches okay so this is one of the best platforms wherein you can learn something new without the coach without spending much money so that's what actually my aim is to help those people who are not able to spend money they are not able they are not in position to spend on the coaching so probably this might help them to improve their game so next we have a request from uh, let's check who is requesting the next 
uh, we have a request from yogaraj let's check yogaraj so game uh, yogaraj yeah, yogaraj is online he's playing this tournament from karnataka stunners and we have mr green from kilo chess india versus yogaraj from karnataka stunners so let's go to the opening so e4 c5 this is a sicilian defense yogaraj is playing sicilian defense from black side so knight f3 pawn g6 pawn d4 pawn takes uh, d4 knight takes d4 and knight to c6 knight to c3 bishop g7 this is called as an accelerated dragon guys if you want to learn an aggressive opening from white side you can go for this setup and if you are playing from the white side against this opening of uh, knight c6 and bishop g7 you should learn the marox the bind variation which is c4 so just keeping few moves back you have to play the move like c4 here and then if bishop g7 or any other move they can play knight c3 this is called as the smarox the bind against accelerated dragon which is this knight c6 and g6 variation so marox the bind you can google out marox the bind you can check the videos on youtube what is marox the bind okay it is a beautiful line which will help you to pawn uh, pawn which will helps the pawn to come on c4 pawn on e4 knight on d4 and establishes a very strong center which is not easy for black to break so you have to learn this opening if you are playing e4 e4 uh, opening e4 as a first move so don't forget it's called as marox the bind i can see a comment from tushar podar hello tushar hope you are doing well good to see you back on the live stream and then we have knight c3 here bishop g7 knight takes c6 now knight takes c6 is not the best move here guys knight takes c6 is actually helping black uh, okay just let me go to the beginning position so this was the position knight takes c6 actually helps black here because after b takes c6 and rook b8 it's very nice for uh, this rook to be on the uh, this is irritating okay so let's go back so knight c6 and b takes c6 and rook b8 actually helps black here because rook can just keep your keep an eye on this b2 pawn and this bishop gets tied down here unless you play pawn to b3 and create this weakness on c3 which can then be attacked on queen a5 and queen c3 so yeah so don't exchange this knight just instead of that you can play bishop e3 and uh, continue the game meanwhile i can see uh okay i can see a comment from tushar says sir always give 100% working tips thank you tushar it always it's my pleasure actually that you are able to use my tips and it's helping you pratham lokare says uh, lohakare says hi hello hello pratham hope you are doing well safe and sound at your home enjoying chess and then we have bishop e2 knight f6 and here actually there is one move like knight pawn to e5 this will just again try to harass the knight so probably d6 is first played here and then knight f6 is played if you play knight f6 directly then this e5 might create some questions for this knight where will the knight go knight cannot go to the g4 because this uh, queen can capture the knight and knight if knight goes to d5 then knight takes d5 is the correct move there knight takes pawn uh, knight takes d5 pawn takes d5 and then this e5 can be saved by playing bishop f4 or even pawn f4 so it's a complicated position not an easy position but make sure that this e5 you think a lot before you push the pawn from white side especially in this position okay bishop e2 knight f6 and uh, bishop e3 instead of bishop e3 you can just try to push the pawn because this knight has nowhere to go now where will the knight go knight cannot go to g4 not to h5 not to d5 yes but knight takes d5 is then possible so e5 is something that you should look for in this positions okay bishop e3 was played pawn to d5 immediately black tries to attack in the center and that is the idea behind accelerated dragon whenever you are playing accelerated dragon just try to push up onto d5 so that the center of white is challenged right away and it's not easy for white to play if he once he loses both of his pawns e4 and d4 in the center so he plays e takes d5 and then we have c takes d5 and what would have happened if bishop b5 check was given here bishop b5 check bishop to d7 knight to d5 was not possible because then uh, white black could have played bishop takes b5 okay so bishop b5 check is not the best one here so white played castles that's fine castles is fine bishop g5 then bishop to f5 and now pawn to h3 rook to c8 and bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 and now this is going to be a very nice it's going to be a paradise for uh actually d5 is hanging so that's it's still not a paradise knight takes d5 rook takes c2 and i think f6 should be captured here okay and, and knight takes f6 e takes f6 should be captured uh, so that is b2 pawn and uh, the dark squares which are 
controlled by this bishop are not there and even this pawn then comes to the f6 square if you look you have three pawns here you will be uh, locking your horns with the three pawns here double pawns on the king side of black's king side and you have two pawns here so you still have a chance to create a passer on the uh, queen side easily as compared to black won't have the chance to get a passer here because black's pawns will be doubled on f7 and f6 okay so try to create these double pawns for your opponent so that he is not able to push the pawn very easily but this in short i think uh, it's it's a nice position for uh, black out there i think black uh, so rook takes c2 and here knight f6 was actually a better move that's what i feel knight takes f6 e takes f6 and probably even uh, queen takes uh, Queen takes uh, d7, the t8 can, could have been played. This was a position, guys. So, yeah, knight takes f6 was a good move here, according to me. But anyways, g4 was played. And then we have, uh, I can see a comment from Bhushan uh, Krodiwal. I am waiting. I am waiting you live first time, sir. Oh, okay, you're watching me and liking it. Thank you, Bhushan. Thanks a lot. I am lucky to have viewers like you, beautiful chess lovers on my live stream. So bishop e4 was played here. Knight to f6 check, e takes f6. That's what I suggested. Get your opponent's double pawns. Create some weaknesses in your opponent's cam. Now these three pawns versus these four pawns and these two pawns versus this pawn. White is having some advantage here. Okay, because these two pawns can get a passer quickly as compared to these double pawns. They will take some time to get them exchanged and create a passer on the king side. Okay, then we have queen takes, rook takes and pawn to b3 and e2 is freer. Why would you give a free bishop, Mr. Green? That is the bad move here. Probably the queen exchange was not supposed to be done. Uh, what else could have we played if we could have played bishop f3 was one of the moves so if queen takes d1 bishop takes d1 can be played the rook is attack rook takes p2 will be played and this pawn will be then gone so we would have to find some other move here probably queen e1 was one of the ways to survive and then get queen to f6 so for example queen e1 rook takes uh, um, b2 and then probably we can play we can play bishop to c4 trying to attack this bishop but it's still a difficult position for white black is still having a good position although he has double pawns here but the rook on seventh rank is creating some havoc okay so of course this queen takes d8 rook takes d8 and b3 was a blunder completely overlooking this bishop and that's where actually white lost the game so white should have been careful here let's quickly fast forward and check what happened here so white tried his level best to create some passers and he failed to create them yep and that's i think it's going to be just a simple game now for black yeah i think yeah after the b pawn is gone it's very it's a cakewalk for black out there uh, just a minute guys okay so there was one more rook c5 but that would have been the blunder because of rook to b4 check okay so rook c5 is tempting here trying to attack this bishop is already there so rook c5 can be played but rook c5 can be answered very well by rook b4 and then king has to move and king can capture the rook so don't play these blunders in your game okay you might get tempted in the in the in the time pressure but don't don't make these blunders so let's go back to the tournament guys and try to find the next game uh, we have the next uh, request. We had request from Yogaraj. We have seen your game, Yogaraj. We had a request from Aditya. We had checked Aditya's game. I'm just trying to find the next request out there. Um, okay. Then we have a request from <laughs> Yogaraj. We have done. Okay. King Nilesh has requested us. So let's check King Nilesh's game. King Nilesh is online and he's playing for which team he's playing from Gujarat Lions he's playing against Shields right now let's check this game guys and let's check the opening what happened here e4 c5 was Sicilian defense so King Nilesh is playing from e4 is playing from white side e4 he is from the uh, Gujarat Lions team and Shields is from BCC uh, so knight f3, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, pawn to c3, pawn to d6, pawn to d4. So this is the Alapin line, guys. So if you want to play something which is out of the book, which is not there in the book, and you want to surprise your opponent, don't uh, you don't want to prepare much? Just go for this Alapin line, e4, c5, c3. It is one of the simplest line to play. Of course, you end up in uh, the uh, uh, in, uh, with the isolated pawn, but the c3, d4 is very nice moves. I personally like this. Uh, personally like this opening. You can try it out. 
uh, we have a we have a request from Pratham to check Aryan's game, right? Pratham, if you are listening, just confirm that we will check Aryan's game after this. So Pontix d4, Pontix d4, Pawn to g6, Knight to c3, Bishop g7. This is again a dragon variation which uh, Black is trying to play with Bishop on g7, and then we have Bishop to g5, Knight to f6, and Bishop to c4, castles, h3, h6, and Bishop to h4. On to g5. Now this h6 and g5 are not the best moves, guys, because it will create some weaknesses on your king side. So if you are playing from black side, don't push this pawn. It's okay if it's it's absolutely fine if this bishop wants to exchange the knight. It's absolutely fine. You should be happy if if this bishop exchanges the knight. Okay, but don't push your pawns. It will just create weaknesses on your on your king side. Instead of this, actually, you can just play bishop d7, queen to a5, rook to c8. And just try to put the pressure in the c file. The queen can attack this uh, g uh, g5 bishop. Queen can also pin this knight on e4. So knight on c3. This knight can capture the e4 pawn. So queen a5, bishop d7, rook c8 is the right way to play in this line, and not to play at 6 and g5. Remember, guys, minor pieces and your rook to c8 has to be played if you are playing Sicilian defense to attack in the open file. Don't waste your moves. Okay, then we have pawn to h6, bishop to h4, pawn to g5, bishop to g3, knight to h5. Now attacking this bishop as well as this d4 pawn twice with the knight as well as the bishop. But it is defended twice by knight and the queen as well. So nothing to worry about there for white as of now. But at the same time, do we have a move like knight takes g5? Because if h takes g5, then we can play queen takes h5. This knight on h5 is hanging and don't keep your pieces hanging guys. If you keep your pieces hanging, your opponent is going to punish you very soon. But there is one twist in the tail because if you capture knight takes g5, black can play knight takes g3 and attack your rook. So here you can play knight takes f7. If rook takes f7, bishop takes f7 check, king takes f7 and pawn takes knight. So you will lose your bishop, knight and uh, this bishop in in turn in return you will get a knight this f7 pawn and a rook so i don't still like it this line wherein you lose three of your minor pieces for a rook and this knight this knight is okay but this rook is a defensive rook so don't give away your minor pieces which are attacking which are developed by capturing this rook on f8 never ever give that never ever give your attacking minor pieces for a rook on f8 so don't play this knight g5 more right here Okay, so let's go and bishop to h2 was played. That is the nice move now because now we can play knight takes g5. Okay, so queen to b6 attacking this d4 pawn. Now the d4 pawn is attacked thrice and b2 pawn is also attacked once. So everything has to be saved now. Okay, so knight takes g5 was played. So white is going for the aggression here and pawn takes g5, queen takes d4, knight queen takes d4. Okay, now here I feel knight takes d4 would have been better that creates this. Okay, so queen takes d4 is better because this queen takes uh, c4 threat is there. So yeah, queen takes d4 is certainly better. I'm sorry for that. And then we have bishop to c3, bishop to b3, knight to e5 and castles and pawn to g4. Just trying to create some kind of tactics here. If h takes g4, bishop takes g4 will, will try to trap the queen. Queen h4 and bishop f6 is available. Queen to... This g3 square might save it, it, save the queen. So bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, and pawn takes uh, h, pawn takes g4, queen takes h5, pawn takes h5. So that will leave both the players with equal number of minor pieces. So knight, bishop, and bishop, bishop versus knight, and equal number of major pieces. But if you look at the pawns, black is having a7, b7, white is having a2, b2. White is having this e4 center pawn. Black is having this someone, somewhat pawn in the center, not exactly in the center. And then this f7, uh, e7, f7 pawns. We have these four pawns. So that is, that leaves white a pawn up. h5 is the passer here, guys. Okay, so if and only if uh, white is able to exchange the pieces. Whenever you are pawn up or piece up, always remember Try to exchange your pieces because you will be getting a certain advantage in the end game if you go with a piece up or pawn up. For example, white is a piece a pawn up here. Look at the pawn on h5. White is having an h, extra h5 pawn here. So if white is able to just create a pawn structure here of f3, I'm just removing all the markers, e4, 
F3, G4 and H4, H5. If this pawn structure is safe and all the pieces from the board get exchanged, white is of course going to win because black would never be able to leave this pawn if this pawn will just win out there on H8. So black king will always have to be nearby to this pawn so that this pawn can be stopped. So that is what the difference is. This is how you can analyze the position guys. Find the location of your minor pieces, of your major pieces, of the pawn structures, of your advantages like pawn can go to h5, h6, h7 and get a queen out there. So you have to analyze everything and then decide what you are going to do in your game. Okay, so here right now the plan for white should be to try and exchange as much as pieces as possible. At the same time, he has to save this b2 pawn. Okay, should not just play a random move like knight d5 and give away this b2 pawn. He has to make sure that he gets some good play, counterplay if he is planning to give away the b2 pawn like knight takes e7, king g7 and then rook to... Uh, so white won this one. Probably that was because of the h5 uh, pawn. But let's go to that position quickly. So yeah, this was the position guys. Okay, so this was the position and here... Uh, Black paid bishop to g4, pawn to f3, bishop takes h5, pawn to g4, bishop to g6, and then we have knight to d5, pawn to e6, and yeah, knight check because now knight check will just capture this bishop, and if f takes, then bishop can capture the pawn on e6, so it's a beautiful small combination. So king moves to h8, and we have knight uh, actually here, black has blundered, okay, black should have played king to h7. Because if knight to g6, then king can capture the g6 knight. And these pawn structure will be intact. It won't be capturable by this bishop. Now, what king h8 does is, if king is smooth to h8, then knight takes g6 is kind of creating a weakness here. Because this pawn on g6 will be weak always. And after bishop will capture the pawn, black will be again a pawn down. So, that's the blunder here. King should have been moved to h7 and not to h8. Okay, these are small things guys, you have to pay attention when you are calculating on in your matches. At least try to make sure that you are not creating any weaknesses here like knight g6 creates in your camp. So king h8 was played, knight takes g6 and now look at these two pawns. These are the targets for uh, white now. Okay, so simple bishop takes g6, bishop takes b2, rook to b1, bishop d4 check, king moves and pawn to b3. Bishop to uh, rook to c1 and now bishop c5, rook check. King g7 and rook to h3. Probably both the rooks will be doubled here in the h file. So we have rook h8, rook to h1, rook takes h3, rook takes h3 and king to f6. Bishop to d5, the rook is hanging over there. So rook has to be saved. Rook comes to the b8 and now we have rook to h7. This a7 pawn is hanging. So probably a5 is the next move. b5 was played supporting the pawn in a different way and also make sure the pawn is getting pushed now. So pawn to f4, pawn to g5, and rook to f7 check. King to g6, pawn to f5 check. And this will give some advantage to white because he has created a passer. White has created a passer here. At the same time, black has not yet created his passer. So black will take some time to create his passer. But at the same time, white is already having it. So white is slightly better here. So king to h6 and now rook to f6 check. King to h7 and uh, rook to g6, pawn to a5, rook takes g5, pawn to b4, rook to h5 check, king moves and now g5. So these two passes have been beautifully created by white and probably that is going to help white to win easily in this game. So pawn to a4 and we have rook to h3. So this is again a nice defensive move. Look at this move guys. It's defending the third rank on b3. Now if pawn push, we can capture the pawn. If pawn captures, we can capture back with the bishop or with the rook. Both options are available, but b3 and uh, we have pawn takes b3, we have a3 after that. So how is white going to handle it? Let's see. So b3 was played, pawn takes b3 and pawn to a3. So this is going to be the passer now. Okay, so pawn to b4 was played, making sure that this pawn can be captured by the rook out there. So we have rook takes b4. And another beautiful move by black because after rook takes b4, white cannot capture the a3 pawn because of this rook to b2 check and there is a discovered attack on this rook which can be captured after the check. So very nice trap, a little move by black out there. Rook to h1 and then rook to b7, uh, b2 check. King to f3, rook to f2 check, king to g4, 
and pawn push on e2 and now we have rook to a1 so probably before pushing the pawn black should have played bishop to d4 and then this pawn is cannot be rook cannot come to a1 this pawn cannot be captured so bishop d4 was slightly a better move but there is a lot of fire going on right now on this on these squares because of f6 check which is coming right away so let's check what happened in the game a2 was played and rook to a1 was played bishop d4 rook takes a2 rook takes a2 bishop takes a2 and this is a winning position for white now because of these two passes but still it is not going to be easy for white okay so bishop d4 was played and king to h5 bishop to f6 f6 check and bishop so here yeah bishop takes f6 was not compulsory but yeah it should be played to just make sure that you have something in the game probably this but the pro problem is this e4 can be right away supported by this bishop and there is no way this pawn can be pushed so we have bishop to d5 king to e5 and king to g6 king to f5 king to f4 sorry not f5 king to f6 king to e3 king to e6 king to d4 and this i think yeah this is simply winning now for white because this pawn is unstoppable a very nice game coming to a beautiful end out there let's go back to a tournament and check the next request next request i think it's from pratham Lok lohakare so pratham will check game of aryan let's check if aryan is online and playing the game aryan 2007 is playing yes he's playing from uh, which team he's playing from hello chess india is playing from my team and he's playing against sony atharva from the chess blasters so let's check his game guys what he is playing out there let's check the first move we have d4 knight to f6 and then pawn to e3 pawn to g6 bishop to d3 bishop to g7 knight to d2 pawn to d5 pawn to f4 pawn to c5 so this is the right way pawn c5 is the right way to attack this d4 pawn whenever you are playing against a queen's gambit wherein the c4 pawn is not played by white he is just trying to go for a closed variation of this pawns or even playing c3 in the Kohle system or even in the london system always try to hit white's center with this c5 pawn there are a lot of ideas behind this and you have to learn all the ideas but c5 is the right way to play against this pawn structure guys always remember don't put your knight on c6 always play c5 per first and then put your knight on c6 don't be in hurry to put your knight on c6 so then we have uh, pawn to c3, pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, knight to c6, knight to f3, bishop to f5. That is a strange move because bishop takes f5, g takes f5 creates a weakness on f5 pawn. Of course, it can be supported with the e6 pawn, but then f7 square becomes weak because of this knight g5 move or um, something, something which, which I feel is not right about this pawn coming to f5 and creating this uh, pawn chain over here but this is a weak pawn chain which don't doesn't give you much of the things to play out okay no it might not give you the best the uh, best of the uh, combinations or winning chances so probably white should have captured this one or at least he should have he could have played bishop queen to uh, c2 there okay now i can see a comment from akshay please analyze my game yes akshay will be analyzing your game Bitopan Sharma says, I am late today. No problem, Bitopan. We still have 22 minutes left on the clock and which you can still enjoy. So, queen to e2 was played. Bishop takes d3, queen takes d3. Castles and castles and pawn to e6, knight to e4, knight to d7. Knight to d7 is again an interesting move, guys. It's just putting pressure on this e5 square. f6 is now underway. f6 can be played. Knight takes d7, queen takes d7. And then e5 can be played later in the game pawn e5 break so let's check what happened so pawn to g4 was a pawn f6 so knight went back to the f3 square and pawn to e5 is now playable but the problem now is whenever you're playing this pawn e5 move make sure that your d5 pawn is supported now right now the problem is if you play pawn to e5 c d takes e5 and this queen takes d5 is going to be a check white is going to be happy to get a free pawn on d5 so probably here you should first play a move like knight b6 support the pawn and then try to play it but yeah i, I think e5 is hanging if knight b6 is split then we have this uh okay so this is the position and here knight b6 i am suggesting knight b6 and then probably you can play e5 move and make sure that your d5 pawn is not hanging so i can see a comment from omkar chakradev omkar is again a very nice youtuber guys follow him follow omkar omkar you can just put your youtube channels link over there in the comment section i want people to follow you you are again a very nice youtuber 
thanks for the compliments omkar and then we have uh, pawn to e5 d takes e5 f takes e5 and we have queen takes d5 check and the queen on d5 is very happy white is very happy he got a free pawn and again the e5 pawn is under question right now so king to h8 and then d f takes e5 knight takes e5 queen takes d8 rook takes d8 knight takes e5 and okay so uh, black won the game but let's check what happened here uh, let's go to that position quickly yeah this was the position rook takes f1 was played here king knight takes f1 knight takes e5 and bishop to f4 and here knight takes g4 i think black is doing okay now even white is doing fine uh pawn to h3 knight to e5 back and bishop takes e5 uh, bishop takes e5 and rook to e1 let's go back a couple of moves i thought there was some kind of uh, combination here can we play rook to f1 here okay rook f1 that could allow us to put the rook on f7 if this bishop is saved bishop can go to e3 or the g3 squares okay but yeah that could have been considerable okay uh okay let's let's check what happened in the game knight e5 was played bishop takes e5 bishop takes e5 can rook to e1 bishop goes back to f6 and now rook to e6 we have king g7 and king to f2 rook to d3 attacking the hanging pawn on h3 and if white is able to black is able to capture this pawn then these two pawns will be winning for black so king to g2 was played saving the h3 pawn and pawn to h5 uh rook goes back to e2 and right now the advantage that black has is that this e7 square is controlled by the bishop so this rook e7 is not possible okay then we have uh, pawn to g5 knight to g3 king to g6 knight to uh, e4 and then we have bishop to e7 knight to f2 and then we have rook to d7 so nice end game going on guys probably this c3 spawn is something that the next will be the next target but c4 is okay c4 just saves everything on White's camp, yeah, c4 just saves everything. So someone here has to create some magic here to get a win. It's not going to be easy for either of the players. So knight now sits on uh, from f2, it goes to e4, it sits on g3. King will go back to the g6, and this knight will now control the h5, f5, e4 squares. And also rook takes e7 is now possible. So rook takes e7 was played. I'm just looking if there was any kind of combination here which. Uh, but could have used with the knight okay there was this uh, knight to d6 check a knight to d6 check as well for the king king g6 or any other move and uh, yeah I, I cannot find anything right away but okay knight g6 is not a bad move knight g6 king to uh, knight g3 king to g6 rook to c7 bishop to c7 and pawn king to f3 bishop to g3 now knight to e4 and bishop comes back to the e7 square supporting the g5 pawn but i think bishop e5 was better here because king can then come to f5 and have a good center control over all these squares so yeah probably yeah but also to defend this c5 was important because of if bishop goes to e5 knight c5 is possible then pawn b6 would have it to be played and then knight d7 and other moves are there for the knight but i think it's still manageable for black by playing bishop to e5 Anyways, let's see knight c3 was played, king to f5, knight to d5, bishop to d6 and knight to e3 check, king to g3, king to e4, bishop to c5 and knight to g2, bishop goes to f2 and king to e5, pawn to g4, pawn takes, pawn takes and this is going to be a little passer for black and if he's able to help on that passer and just get his king quickly to the a2 square, probably via this route, then he can win quickly to get these pawns and get these pawns rolling and this pawn is still going to sit there this knight is going to be tied up on the g2 square or at least on e3 or f4 square to not allow this g2 pawn so let's check what's happening now so king to d6 was played and now king to d3 king to c5 king to c3 and now pawn to a5 stopping this b4 check this is called as a prophylactic move prophylactic move is the move which you make to stop your opponent's idea so b4 was the idea here which was stopped by this a5 move it is called as profile axis it is a very nice middle game technique or middle game topic guys you can google out what is profile axis in chess okay it's going to help you a lot in improving your middle games so pawn to a5 pawn to a3 pawn to b5 c takes b5 king takes d5 and pawn to b4 pawn to a4 and 
now the problem is that black has fixated his, white has fixated his pawns on the dark squares on which the opponent's bishop can create some attack so if bishop is able to come to d4 go to this b2 square capture these pawns then it is going to be in black's favor so actually white should not have fixated the pawns on the dark squares that if you just go a couple of moves back here actually a4 check was better because then white uh, the pawns would have been on the lighter squares okay but anyways this white e4 was played pawn to a4 and this gives some chances for black now so bishop to b6 knight to f4 knight to bishop to c7 knight g2 and now yeah that's what i was seeing now the bishop is threatening to go to the b2 square and get this pawn so now king has to again go and defend this b2 square knight has to defend a g2 square the king is free to attack not exactly attack but at least to uh, has create some kind of tactics okay so we have king to c2 king to c4 knight check king to d4 and knight to f5 check king to e4 and knight to g6 a pawn was sacrificed why was the pawn sacrificed there it was not necessary okay if we could have just played what was the move there i'm just trying to find the best move can white play king to d2 here Okay, just try to get himself in this uh, magic square of this pawn. Okay, interesting uh, position, guys, for the end game. But let's check knight to g5 was played, the king to e4, knight takes g6. I would not have captured this pawn right away because I'm still unsure about this. Like, if if white is able to capture the pawn, then yes, it's you can go for this uh, this sacrifice. But right now, white is not able to capture this pawn, so it's not it's not a good idea to capture this on right away okay so bishop takes and we have king to c3 king to d5 and this king will now uh, put a lock on all these squares so now probably here probably b4 could have been played b5 b5 no king to c5 is just killing the white right away so king to d3 and bishop now yeah so now this is going to lose for uh, this is going to lose for white now a simple win after this yep now it's the same colored bishop also in this case guys you have to remember your pawn if you are playing from the black side now your pawn and your bishop has to be of the same color where it's going to queen for example this is bishop is so this is the dark square which this pawn is going to queen if your bishop is not on dark square then it can never control the queening square so in that case the king can just come to b1 and it can go and sit on a1 and this pawn cannot be pushed not allowed because the king is sitting on a1 so even if you're exchanging if you're entering bishop and pawn ending make sure that whichever square you are going to queen the bishop is on the same square color square so if you are queening on the dark square bishop should be of the dark square if you're queening on the light square try to keep the bishop with the light square if that's not possible if you are having a light square bishop then don't go into this ending because it might end up in a draw for you try for some different ending Okay, then we have uh, king to b4, king to c1, then king to b3, king to b1, pawn to a2 check. And now after king a1, it's a beautiful bishop d4 check. This is the frame which the black player can actually frame up, take a printout and put up against the wall, feeling proud about to checkmate with the bishop and a pawn out there. So let's go back to the tournament guys. So we have taken all the requests. For, okay, Akshay's request is still pending and... How much time we have left? We have still 11 minutes to go. So let's check Akshay Jogarikar's game. Akshay, you are playing from which team? Akshay Jogarikar, yeah, he's online. Akshay, Akshay is online. He's playing from Gujarat Lions. He's playing against Girish. And Girish is playing from uh, Karnataka Stunners. So let's check your game, uh, guys. E4, D5, this is a Scandinavian defense. One of the recent openings that we saw being played by Magnus Carlsen a lot. Knight to f3, even in his blitz games, I recently saw he was playing this d5 move very common, very frequently. Pawn to c6, e takes d5, c takes d5, pawn to d4. And uh, Aditya Srivastav says, excellent analysis, sir. Thank you, Aditya Srivastav. Hope you are doing well. Safe and sound at your home. And good to see you back online on this live broadcast. So welcome back. So knight to c6, then we have bishop d3, knight to b4. And wasting a couple of moves with the knight, I don't think it's a good idea, guys. So don't make... It's one of the opening principles, okay? Don't move your piece twice in the opening. 
invest that move in developing some other piece like knight f6 or bishop to g4 or e6 any other move which will help you to develop but don't move your piece twice in the opening let's check what happened in the game actually so this is the first uh, tip for you akshay mr akshay if you are listening or if you if you are watching this comment later in the uh, later after tonight so make sure that you don't move your piece twice in the opening okay bishop to e2 bishop to f5 and now this c3 pawn is attacked by this knight and bishop but it's not going to be creating any kind of magic out there because knight a3 and c3 is sufficient to just kick this knight back and you would have you would end up in losing all of your developing moves be behind this knight of knight b4 and knight c6 back so now we have pawn to e6 castles rook to c8 pawn to c3 knight c6 back knight to b5 and knight b5 can again be kicked by pawn to a6 this knight has nowhere to go it can just go back to a3 and sit for remaining part of his life so knight to f6 bishop to f4 and now this knight might have something okay not much but something uh, which it can do so bishop e7 knight to e5 knight takes e5 d takes e5 knight to e4 and that is interesting because pawn to f3 so pawn to f3 is actually very nice uh, way to play actually because here you have this queen b6 check okay if you pay attention here we have this queen b6 beautiful check to the king of course it can be blocked with this knight or even by the queen but that will leave the b2 pawn vulnerable there okay of course this knight has to be saved first knight can come to c5 and save itself and then b2 pawn has to be saved by this uh, by the white out there okay and uh, uh pawn to f3 was played so there is another comment from vishal sir could you please analyze aditya she was those games so aditya yes we would be able to analyze your game if you just share your id and if you are playing right now we would be happy to analyze your game mr aditya and mr vishal just share the ids yes i'll be happy to analyze your games let's quickly go back to this live position so where were we we were at this position yeah bishop e7 was played knight e5 knight takes e5 d takes e5 knight to e4 pawn to f3 and i was explaining about this queen b6 check so if possible try to give this queen b6 check and if if you are lucky if king moves inside then you have this knight to f7 check and those who are not aware of this check and mate a beautiful smothered mate is available here if queen b6 check king to h one we have knight f2 check if king comes back to g1 then we have knight to h3 check king goes back to h1 and then we have queen to g1 check rook takes g1 is compulsory and then we have beautiful knight to f2 check and mate it is called as a smothered mate you can look at this uh combination again and again on this video you can just go back few seconds and check it again it's a beautiful smothered mate which you will always enjoy okay so let's go to the nc5 was played here this was the actual game knight to d4 was played and this bishop should not be given away this bishop should be played to the g6 square and keep we should keep attack on this uh, b1 square so that queen b6 cannot be replied with rook to b1 as this bishop is there on g6 it will keep attacking this b1 square so after you play queen b6 this b2 pawn will be attacked okay and then white would be in question how to save it probably white will play b3 or he might play b4 but if he pushes the pawn then if the pawn is on b3 then this pawn c3 pawn becomes the backward pawn which is not being supported if he plays b4 sorry then the pawn on c3 becomes a backward pawn which then now can be attacked by the rook on c8 by moving the knight back to d7 so you have a lot of plans here you have to create a weakness in opponent's camp and try to attack as much as possible i can see a comment from pratham thank you for, sir for seeing my game yes pratham i it's my pleasure to analyze all your games you can keep coming back and keep requesting i can analyze your game n number of times no problem at all i'm happy to have the viewers like you so we have pawn to b4 here this is not the correct move from girish this will put the c3 pawn in a bit of a question because it is a backward pawn now the pawn which is which cannot be supported by any other pawns is called as a backward pawn which is generally a target for your opponent so let us take the let us take the advantage of this let's check how black took the advantage of this knight went back to d7 and yeah pratham says i will surely take print of the bishop and checkmate and stick it to yes pratham at at i would be really happy to see that just send me a snap of that when you put that uh, print out on your wall in at your home it will be happy to see that so just send me a screenshot i will again show it to all of our viewers if you do that okay so that's my promise uh, knight takes f5 e takes f5 and queen takes d5 so that was my uh, 
uh, I was not happy giving away this bishop guys it will destroy your pawn structure look at this beautiful pawn chain this pawn chain is very nice it's supporting you it's helping you to create a strong center and if you allow your opponent to give away a beautiful bishop like this then it is going to destroy yourself you're going to destroy yourself so this is they should not be allowed the bishop should have been played to g6 you should have saved this bishop not allowing this rook to come on b1 square but unfortunately this bishop was lost e takes f5 was played and queen takes d5 was played destroying your center there are no pawns in the center now guys your pawns are doubled in if you just go a couple of moves back look at this pawn structure would you like this pawn structure or this pawn structure which one is better of course the previous one so don't don't lose your pawn chains pawn chains are the key to winning the games guy it is key to create a solid positions which your opponent cannot attack okay so unfortunately this was given away queen to d5 queen b6 check king to h1 and now d7 is hanging so another blunder from black here so black you have to pay attention you cannot just keep giving away your pieces in this way okay so suddenly my voice has become serious i don't know why but i'm just becoming a bit serious after losing this pawn chain i feel that some part of my heart is lost if i, I just cannot tolerate losing this such good pawn chains but that's right abhishek akshay it's a tip for you don't lose your pawn chains so queen takes d7 a free piece and i think this should be easy for now uh black to win the game there's nothing out there that black can do black just can wait and uh, hope for a blunder from white but win exchange and it should be easy win now for but in short in fact okay white has won okay white won the game comfortably and yeah that's the yeah finishing part of the game yeah that's a checkmate so let's go back to tournament guys so no more requests right now all the requests we have done we have almost analyzed around seven to eight games with all the requests out there and i can just see uh yes so ganesh is too many requests out there for analysis yes ganesh that's right but i have tried to do all my best just three minutes remaining in the tournament i still have one more game i can take one more game probably let's check we have a new team today warriors team they have just they don't have much players and the teams which are not having much players probably we will have to uh we might not be able to take you tomorrow because of the low attendance so this uh warriors team is from sri lanka i think and we know is the captain of that team so let's check our game last three minutes is remaining guys let's check we know his game and uh e4 c5 sicilian defense knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 this is called as the rasolimo attack so if you want to prepare something against sicilian defense which is which does not have much theory prepare this prepare bishop b5 it's a nice opening from white side it is called as rasolimo attack you can attack as much as possible with this combination you have a lot of other moves c3 d4 which can follow up after this exchange on c6 the idea is to play the anti sicilian Rosolimo attack is one of the anti Sicilians. Then there is a Mora Gambit, Wing Gambit, Grand Prix attack, Alapin, and uh, there are also other like side variations like Eleven Fish, which will just help you to attack and get some tactics in the game. So this is one of them, Rosolimo attack. This which you can prepare from white side. So pawn e5, Bishop takes c6, B takes c6, and Knight takes e5. A free pawn. Why would you give away your center pawns? Don't give away your center pawns, guys. give away only if you have tactics like this which is now attacking the e4 but now d4 i think can be played f6 is there then played okay d4 was played pawn f6 was played pawn f6 can we just give this check queen h5 check pawn to g6 knight takes g6 queen takes e4 check then we can play king to uh, d1 queen takes d4 check and then bishop d2 and probably uh, king can just move but we can capture the rook there on h8 so yes i think queen takes h5 queen h5 check was possible pawn g6 knight takes g6 if h takes g6 then we can capture the rook on h8 so this combination needs to be checked i might be wrong but this is still a tempting move to give queen h5 check g6 knight takes g6 h takes g6 not h takes g6 plus queen takes e4 check king to d1 queen takes d4 check we have bishop d2 and then we have this rook e1 check as well as this knight takes h8 from uh, the 
the white side so it would be interesting combination but f6 was played and then knight came back he was a very poor knight he could not take much chances so he just came back and then we have queen takes e4 check bishop to e3 bishop to d6 and we have knight to c3 attacking the queen out there so we have queen to e7 and pawn takes c5 bishop takes c5 will be played as this e3 now is under attack and instead of playing queen e2 we could have just castled that would have created some trap if bishop takes e3 f takes e3 queen takes e3 then we can just move our f1 rook to e1 and quietly pin this queen on e3 which will be then lost so we should have castled here anyways let's see what happened in the game queen e2 was played and bishop e3 queen e3 queen e3 f3 and this e3 is not the best pawn it's an isolated pawn it's something that you will have to keep saving for the rest rest of your game guys so don't end up in this weak weak pawn situation try to avoid weak pawns in your position because weak pawns kind of uh, stay, stick they they will hold a stick in their hand and they will stand behind you whipping you whenever possible the weak pawns so don't don't create weak pawns in your position okay so pawn to d5 castles and knight to h6 and then we have pawn to e4 trying to break away here okay so pawn d5 was not the best move from black pawn d5 just allowed just i'm keeping few moves few moves back so white won this one uh, but let's go quickly to the position where we were uh, where were we yeah this was the position yeah this was the position the pawn d5 is actually helping black here uh, white here to just get this pawn exchange but black has to maintain this pawn on e3 get the knights out try to rook with the rook on e1 try to play rook to e6 get the rook other rook on e8 and try to attack this e3 pawn as much as possible that's your target okay and i can see a yograj comment so yograj karnataka students did not play well that's okay yograj sometimes you don't get your best players or teams sometimes are on the lower side but that's absolutely fine i know you are going to come back tomorrow again with the strong team so uh yeah so this e3 is a weak pawn so black should try to put all the rooks in the e file and try to attack this e3 pawn d5 was played it's helping white uh, knight at 6 and pawn to e4 bishop to e6 pawn takes d5 bishop pawn takes d5 rook to e1 attacking the bishop on e6 king f7 supporting the bishop and that would again put the rook back to f1 because there is now knight g5 check knight takes e6 is possible because the f6 pawn is now pinned and uh, uh, we have rook to b8, knight to g5 check, king to knight to, king to e7, knight takes e6, rook king takes e6, rook to e1 check, king to d6, and we have pawn to b3, saving the b2 pawn, rook to e8, king to f2, king to f2 could have been answered with this uh, knight check, or even this knight to f5, this knight can just come to the d4 square, try to attack this c2 pawn, so yeah, rook to c8 was also a nice move, because then, but actually this uh, rook takes rook can be played this this rook will come to the e8 square and then rook takes c3 is not possible so let's see rook pawn to h3 rook takes c3 a free piece given away not free piece but uh, rook given away by black out there for the extra pawns but i think this might end up in white's favor because two rooks are very strong here and these two passers guys these are going to help white win very quickly so let's quickly fast forward tournament has ended we have to i'm excited to see the results but i'm just trying to finish this game very quickly as possible and yeah that i think should be winning for white now because white has two extra pawns not extra pawns but the two unstoppable passers out there and which might not be stopped very quickly still there were some blunders from both the players but not blunders but some minor inaccuracies which both of them have to improve check actually here um, after king e3 you can just play king to c1 and king to b1 this rook has to go out somewhere and then this pawn pushes unstoppable okay so rook to c5 was checked this just gives slight chance for black to just put this pressure on this b7 pawn instead of that you can just come to king c1 and king b1 okay so we have rook to c5 rook to b2 rook check king to e4 rook goes back to b5 and rook to e2 and the screen and that's the end of the game so nice game again coming to a nice end uh, we now beating swapnil so let's go back to a tournament guys and this is the final standing of 76th kilo chess india team battle prayag raj futures gms have scored a double century today 213 points 
uh, there is Chess Blasters on 142, Gujarat Lions on 136, King Nilesh from Gujarat Lions topping the team today. So congrats to King Nilesh. She is again a very good acquaintance of us. BCC, uh, Electro Wizard, 24 points. The team has finished on 133. Karnataka Stunners on 116. Today finishing a couple of uh, places below. In last week, Karnataka Stunners have done really well. But today, I think they were short of few good players. As I can see, Yograts comment at three of their strong players. Played for BCC. So we have a team switching by the good players. That's not good for the teams, guys. You have to be loyal for your teams. Anyways, Chennai Chess Club on 114. GST Guna on 25. Kilo Chess India on 102. We have Reckless Devil on 27 from Kilo Chess India topping the team. So congrats, Reckless Devil, for doing that for my team. We have Warriors team today from uh, Sri Lanka again and uh, finishing on 61, Kings of 64 squares and Golden Castle Chess Club. Very less attendance from both the teams, three all the three teams. So probably we have to get more uh, players, guys. So all the teams who are not having more players, please try to get uh, more players or else we will have to deprioritize your request. We have to get the teams who have more players who from which the more players play. Okay, Narendra uh, says we came back today. Yes, Narendra, Chess Blasters finishing on the second place. But still, there is a huge difference between Prayagaraj and Chess Blasters. So you have to come back tomorrow again and play better chess and try to come on top. So I think that's all from today's live broadcast, guys. If you have any questions, any queries, make sure you note down the Skype ID. It's displayed on the screen, guys. If you can note down the Skype ID, you, call, you can call me on Skype when the live broadcast is on. I will be taking up your calls and then you can um, tell your queries or you can just tell your story how you how you have uh, um, have you learned chess what was your struggle in chess what levels have you achieved who was your coach what we would we would be happy to love your like your stories and to hear from all the chess players this is a platform where everyone is same no one is above anyone there everyone is same here and everyone can share their stories and we would be happy to know your stories guys so you can just call me on skype id amazon 184 when the live broadcast is on i will 100 percent receive your call on skype and then you can tell your story and we have a comment from mr ferris gg yes mr ferris it was a good game and good tournament as well and we have pratham saying thank you sir for conducting tournaments Thank you all. Nilesh Gupta says good games all. Yes, it was fantastic tournament. I really loved this tournament. 143 players playing today. Each player gave their 100% and gave us their beautiful entertainment on this YouTube channel. So all the viewers out there, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends as much as possible. Come back tomorrow at the same time. We will be having a beautiful hour from 9.30 to 10.30 to enjoy chess and make our lives beautiful so bye bye take care and good night until we meet tomorrow tomorrow again at 9 30 pm ist